What up folks, welcome back to the channel. This is KUT and this is a KUT Productions video. Um, today I have a very special show. I have a special guest by the name of Linda Lopez. She is the wife of the CEO of B-Boy Records. Now B-Boy Records is the label that hosted Criminal Minded, which is KRS-One's first album with his group Boogie Down Productions. Um, there would be no more KRS-One if it wasn't for that label and that record criminal minded which is considered one of the hip hop classics i think it's like one like nas's favorite album i believe i think i've heard him say that in an interview or something but yeah um so i have linda coming up stay tuned let's do it So, what was your husband's name? Well, his his real, his name um, was Will Camara, and then um, after me and him got married, he had a name change. Okay. And he became Darnoff. Last okay. name, and I have yeah, we had three boys, and um, they're they're grown men, you know now, you know. And yeah. They, they miss really. He was a great dad. He was a great husband. He was mm -hmm. a good businessman. He was very humble. Yeah. Um, a lot of things, you know, and um, yeah, we just, you know, it's a legacy that, you know, I talked to my boy yes. about it, you know, and, um, you know, uh, one of my sons, he's, you know, he's still, he still has a hard time dealing with his dad being here, you know. Yeah, yeah, sorry, um, yeah, sorry to hear that. I know, he it's, was, know it's rough. He was, yeah, because he was very attached to his dad, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's something that's always going to be with us, you know, you're always going to miss him, you know. Absolutely. So, in the early days, were you around when the label was just getting started? Were you there during that time period? Yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, um, I had a close friend of mine. Um, I was going through a lot of turbulent times at home, so I had left home. And um, I happened to run to a friend of mine who's like, uh, he said, Yo, Linda, you know, come with me to the Bronx. I got this contract with this record label. I got to go up there. So, I jumped in his car. We, we went to the Bronx. And... There it is. The minute I walked to the door, you know, um, of course I didn't know that was going to be my husband, but you know, he's like, "Oh wow, yeah. look what the wind, he's like, look what the wind blew in." You know, I said, "I'm looking for a, a valuable secretary." Oh, okay, <laughs> dude, nice. Yeah, so that's so, the beginning. Okay, wow. That's the beginning. Yes. So um, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because I just reunited again with him, and sadly, you know, he's he's battling cancer, my my friend. Oh uh, yes, yeah, sorry. That introduced me to my to, to B boy and to my husband. And, mm -hmm. uh, it all started there. I mean, I, I I came in there, you know, not having any knowledge of of what was going on or nothing. But sure. as I went along, you know, um, I I I mainly did a lot of the uh, administrative work. Shipping, yeah. Uh, phone calls. I did you know radio promotion. I did road you know. Wow. I mean, I, I was doing everything. I basically was a muscle to B boy. I never really actually. Interview with anybody, I never really spoke about this to you know people, no one. Yeah, you know, well, thank you for friend. giving me, thank you for giving it to me, and I'm gonna make sure it gets out through my channels, and we're gonna share it. We're gonna get and you, of course, <laughs> you know, with the direction of my husband, who the genius. I believe my husband was always ahead of his time, mm -hmm. way ahead of his time. You know, he was very an in, in, innovative person, a very creative. Yeah. Um, uh, he's a Pisces. He was born in the March and the 18, and he was very creative. You okay. Know, um, and we did a lot of, we, we, we had so many things planned for B-Boy, you know, like with the branding and we didn't get a yeah. chance to do like the videos or the, you know, the, the clothing. We had so many things that we wanted wow. to do. Wow, yes, yes. But we didn't get a chance to do it because, you know, Greed and his business partner and um, mm -hmm. Jack Allen, who actually destroyed the label. Right. I have up uh, really quick. Sorry to cut you off. I have the uh, Wikipedia. I'm not how sure everything is, how accurate, but it says on uh, label it's formed by no Jack. I actually been meaning to actually <clears throat> this year if I have a chance to actually really address a lot of slander and things that people are saying about the label. Yes. If they, they don't have so, the right story, you know. Um, right. My husband never went to jail, so, you know. <laughs> okay. You know, you know, saying that the, the label was closed down because he went to jail. That's not true. That's mm -mm. slander. Yeah, um, that won't that won't shut a label down. That no, going to jail won't shut. No. Talk, this talk, they say the same thing, and 
these are all slandering accusations and things that are saying that it's not true, you know. Yeah. And actually, um, when um, Jack Allen and my husband had a big dispute over the label and who's going to have control over the label, because all this came about when the money started coming in, because mind you, we were shipping records. I was shipping records all around the world mm-hmm. and everything. So the money started just coming in, and then it was just so much you didn't know what to do. You so lose track, they yeah. To take all the physical aspect of the shipping to New Jersey and keep the late, keep them, you know, administrative operations in the Bronx. <clears throat> so he actually basically went and hired a book, a book, um, a booking agent, and um, to to administer all the financial, and then told Bill that he, my husband, that he couldn't do it anymore. So my husband was like, "Well, this is my record label. How is, I'm gonna let somebody handle that." You sure. Know? It's just a, so right. that's when the dispute came, and my husband didn't really want to go into it, so we, we just left. We just left, and it's funny because after we left, we actually spoke to our pressing plant, and we started a new record label that was called Boogie Down Records. Mm-hmm. And I actually was the one that designed the record label. It was not a parent. Uh, it was not a, a, a. It was not a label that was under the umbrella of Viva. It was just a record label. Me and my husband. We we started releasing a couple of records, and and we were doing some stuff. But you know, uh, my husband actually continued. To you know, stay in the music industry. I kind of like shied away from it after B Boy yeah. and okay. I had started children. I kind of like didn't really want to be involved too much. You know? Sure, sure. Uh, oh yeah. So let me ask you, what was it like? When you first, what was Boogie Down Productions like when you first met them? Like KRS One, Scott LaRock, DJ Red Alert, if he was around, RoboCop. What was it like that well, first? You remember the first time? Yes. Um. I mean, I was in the office. I was very always so busy. You know, I would see them in and out, in and okay. out. You know, right. A lot of people in that office. You know, DJs, artists. I actually did a lot of the. Um, I did a lot of the A and R, meaning that um, suggestion to my husband for the groups to be signed. Yeah. Um, usually, we we'll close the office. You know, we would go, go out and grab something to eat and come back. And back then, they would send a lot of tapes, so we would sit there and I would listen to them. Demo tapes, and then yeah. I would, you know, yeah, and I would say, you know, I think we should find this and that and bring them in for an interview and stuff like that. So yeah, I was nice. And he had just, uh, you know, support to him, to his direction. And, um, yeah, but when I first met, met them, um, I mean, you know, Bill introduced me to them, you know. Um, I, I, I kind of was, like, pretty, pretty, started getting kind of close to Scott, you know. Um, okay, yeah. And um, Chris, I wasn't really, never really too close with him. He would come there with, with Mona, you know, they would come yeah. there now and... I had a good relationship with D-Nice and Magoo mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, Robocop. Mm-hmm. You know, he was kind of like really, we used, to, we used to get into a lot of arguments because, you know, he was he was always, you know, just doing a lot of stuff, extra stuff. But other yeah. than that, you know, they were, they were cool. I mean, they were just basically just focused on trying to get the career off and, right. you know, they talk like that, you know. Um, I know that that experience at times, you know, got into there's little debates about, you know, the direction of where Scott wanted to go and where Chris wanted to go. Yes. Um, Chris uh, is very, you know, headstrong and yeah. he knows what he wants. So that's, you mm-hmm. know, he's been like that all the time, you know. I don't, yeah. I don't, everybody's personality, so I cannot, you know, talk bad about him or right. anything like that. So, I feel that um, <clears throat> when all the groups, you know, and I'm just talking about B-Boy Records, I'm talking about all the record labels, like Sugar right. Hill. Mm-hmm. Sugar Hill Records, records yeah. And all the all, and all the artists signed, they were very young. Yeah, and, they were um, kids. Yeah, pretty much kids. <laughs> everybody, everybody was young, and they didn't really have, you know, knowledge of what they were doing or signing because they didn't have really like lawyers to direct them and stuff Mm-mm. like that. Nope. So I feel that record labels took advantage of them, and um, it's sad because you know all the pioneers they're still struggling, and a lot of them don't have money because you know the record labels took, took their money, you know, and. Yeah. Um, and they didn't have the direction, but I think it was also too. If you, as an artist, I basically say, you know, if you're going to get in the music industry or any kind of business, you're going to get into to do your homework basically to study and to find out what is it about and the contract. Always have a, a lawyer yes. that's um, going to you know oversee and, and 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 overlook what you're signing. You know, that's you, right. You don't sign. Absolutely but, right. Uh, yep. So um, what was it like? What, sorry, to cut you off. Really, we'll get right back to we'll get back to the business. But what was it like having that big record? Um, like when the when the like say the South Bronx when that dropped when Karis won they were going against the Juice Crew. What was that time period like? Were you uh, you, you remember all that? Screaming and jumping at the you don't even know. <laughs> when we first heard the record play on the radio, we just 
dropped everything. We were just so happy. Wow, I bet, so, yeah. Nice. But it's like, it gives me goosebumps just to think about that day. It was just yeah. so great, you know, to have, you know, your record, everybody, everybody's car, your record is playing. Yeah. Everywhere, just worldwide, and we were in demand. And, mm. I mean, we even, even had Russell Simmons come to the office mm-hmm. uh, to try to get enough to get on the roster for the... Uh, uh, to go to Madison Square Garden because that was one of the big shows that they used to do every year. Yeah. You know? And he says that you don't have, if they're not Death Jam artists, they can't get on the roster, but he wanted a Chris, and actually Chris performed. Wow, so he got, that yeah. Was, that, yeah, that was awesome, yeah. Wow, that's, that's cool, that is cool. That is cool. Yeah. So you were there doing, you were there the whole time, so the battles, this is like historical. So talk to me yeah. about, you also, so Cold Crush Brothers were there on um on the label too, yeah. right? In Levi 167. Yeah. So they were yeah. some, yeah. You had a roster. You guys had a had a roster. It's just a shame. I, I wish it would, you know could have kept going. That'd have been dope. I, I was able to meet with Levi a couple of years ago, about four or five years ago. Um, Levi, to me, to me, to be honest, you're speaking, and a lot of people don't know this, but Levi actually was a better rapper than than Chris. To tell you the truth, lyrically, he's really mm. nice. Yeah, yeah that was his, they were friends, friends, right? Friends. They were friends, right? Huh? Yeah. yeah he was Yes, he was part of the crew. Yes, uh, yep. Yeah, because because you know his addiction and all that stuff. You know he yeah he took another route. But uh, he's a great brother. You know, I spoke to him even after, um, and um, you know he just you know they just everybody kind of like went their separate way. So what my husband did was basically try to give everybody an outlet to have their own platform to mm-hmm. be able to express themselves and to have their own music. So that's what we did. But you know with, with Levi and. Castle B too was part of Boogie Down Productions. Yeah. Uh, which he released a song too. He's he's an excellent uh, MC as well. He's still around. He's um, yeah, and um, they were all part of Boogie Down Production. They started with Chris, you know, Castle nice. B, Levi One Seven, and uh, they actually had a record that was released way before the Criminal Mind Day. It was called Advance. Okay. It was called Advance, and it was uh, they also had a, a song about crack that they also did. I think it was on Crack the Attack, time. right? Yeah, yeah, Crack Attack, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I got, I'm a vinyl head. I got vinyl. I'm holding Criminal Minded right here. I just have it in my hand, just you know, <laughs> show the people. It's, this is a video, so I'm, I'm filming myself, but we, we talking. Yeah. I put pictures up. But yeah, that's yeah. just some um, classic, classic moments. Yeah, you, you got to get out there and yeah. tell these stories. But I, like I said, thank you for um, coming on with me. I'm gonna ask you one thing about your husband. Um, once you guys, you guys, you say you, you end, up, end up getting married. What was his grand vision? You touched on it. His grand vision for B-Boy Records um, had things well, kept going. His grand vision was actually to, um, to basically re-release the whole catalog because you have to understand that after we left, a lot of things started falling apart. B-Boy Records was really just facing off, you know, um, fading away because there was nobody really to, to, to run, the, run the record label. Me and him were not there. Mm. So, and half the people like Jack Allen had hired to try to keep running the label, they didn't know the operations, they didn't know what they were doing, so... Wow, yeah. You know, they were, yeah, so everything, like, you notice that, I mean, the whole world is, like, we vanished, but in reality, it was, it's always been there, just that they wasn't had the right people that were, they didn't know what to do with the record label. Mm-hmm. And uh, his vision was basically to, like I said, uh, was to basically to take control back of the record label again and re-release new music. Um, he was already doing stuff, like, overseas with other artists. Um, wow. Yeah, my husband was doing some, he did some actually recordings with other uh, artists from Paris, um, mm-hmm. Africa. Wow. Uh, Peter Brown, working with Peter Brown. He was working with a lot of different other um, producers and doing stuff. Because uh, he believed that um, the music was really going to evolve into the, the other country, you know, the world, parts of the world. Yeah. And that's what, yes. And uh, the merchandising was another thing that he was always talking about. You know, wow, other- that... I have to cut you. The merchandising thing to, to think about that back then was that was huge because nobody was. It wasn't really quite formed yet. Yeah, Run DMC oh with Adidas. About that. that was but way back. Yeah, he was ahead of his time. Seriously. And another thing, and another thing he talked about was that uh, rap was just going to go into other streams of other languages, and he was trying to get. We actually signed, I think, two or three artists that spoke Spanish. And, wow! Um, yeah. He, he wanted to release a lot of like Spanish, like what what Asuna is doing right now. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Like it's all his stuff. He yes. wanted to explode into that genre. Yeah. You know, and um, and we he didn't get a chance to do it, but um, yeah. He, yeah. He was a visionary. He yeah, definitely, definitely. I hear it. You know, 
what gets me upset right now is that after my husband died, you know, we haven't even, I haven't really got a chance to really, um, I mean, I actually incorporated um, Bebo Records, it's called Bebo Records World Corporation now. Yes. Um, I have a platform that I actually bought into and I haven't really done that much with it, but this year I'm hoping that I would. Um, and for music, videos, some and books. Yeah, oh yeah. And, uh, Yes, and uh, actually, um, I was just been going through the internet, you know, I know a lot of artists like Cardi B, yeah. and uh, Nas, and, mm -hmm. you know, Diddy, and everybody, they sample stuff, Yeah. You know, from the catalog. Yes. Um, I really wish that they would start, like, sending me a check, you know, because um, yeah. they didn't have somebody's permission to sample or, you know, get permission from that. We were mm -hmm. working, we're still out here, we are a corporation, you know, and... Mm -hmm. People need permission and clearance for these things, you know, out of respect, you know, for our label. And yes, they need to. Right. Um, also, the clothing and the, mo you know, they are the merchandising clothes without mm -hmm. my, our brand, without permission. Um, things like that, you know. All these things I'm going to hopefully address this year with yeah. a lawyer. Yeah, that's what they say. A junk, yeah, you get a lawyer that's ready to go and they, yeah, they'll. they'll and, yeah, uh, and we're going to definitely contest all these things and all these people that are doing illegal things with the re with the record label and mm -hmm. everything, you know. Right, right. But uh, other than that, you know, it's still, actually, I went to SOBs a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. um, Chris was performing and um, the response, I felt like I was in Union Square. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the response of, you know, people still dancing and um, to the criminal mind. They were yes. He is, like, I don't say this, I'm not I'm sure how you feel about Karis one but he has been my favorite MC forever. I met him a couple times, you know, I got, he signed my records and stuff like that, but, you know, it's been some stuff with the Africa Bambada stuff where people kind of shied away from him, but as far as an MC and a performer, he owns that space as best live performer. Chris, Chris doesn't know, like, I'm one of his biggest <laughs> fans, like, I love No him. doubt, he's yeah. He, he's one of, he's a, he's, he's so iconic, I mean, he's gonna be, yeah. there's never gonna be another Chris, like, no. never, never, never. Nope. never. Nope. Like Chris is what the, he's really a poet. Yeah, absolutely. Poet. Philosopher, all that. I mean, yeah. A few, and like I, I said. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Oh, continue. You good? No, I just wish that you know he will. Um, you know, I know that he, you know artists have to evolve. You know, yes. to stay you know relevant in the game, but um, I think he should just stay with the essence of what he you know what he started with, and that will make him you mm. know to stay classic and to stay you know uh, relevant, but. Did so you, I know he tried to change his style or whatever, but... Um, did you know... I don't want to forget this point. He was on with Fat Joe recently on Fat Joe's show. He mentioned a criminal-minded documentary. Do you know of this? He, he mentioned a what? I'm sorry? A criminal-minded documentary. Okay. Yeah, look at... Oh, oh. You know about well, this? I, I've, had, I've had words uh, with people, and actually I started a project with someone that I was going to do a documentary. I, I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, KRS-One like, was going to do one. He was mentioning it's just the whole history, I guess, from the beginning. So you guys will have to be involved. Yeah. Well, the, this is the funny thing, though, that everybody wants to ride the B-Boy wave and talk about B-Boy, but they never include me. You know, mm. just like they did the uh, some, some, they did inauguration for Scott LaRock. Nobody yeah. never called me. Nobody yeah. Me. This is the best fact. You cannot, you cannot have history and erase the people that were, that were part of it. Do you I mean, have... Just with the hip -hop. Just with the hip hop museum, that was my idea. Yeah, you know, yeah, the museum's there. Yeah. Yeah, ran with it. Yeah, so I mean, the idea is there. You know, more power to them, whatever. Yeah. You know, whatever. But it's like, um, sometimes you can't share your ideas with people because they'll run with it and. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, they, they will. They won't even give you credit. They no, they won't. Yep. The you know what I'm saying? So more power to them. I'm not a hater. I know how to evolve myself and how to create myself. Word up. You know, Word up. Myself. Do you have and any? Those ideas. There's a thousand more. You know. Right. Do you have any um, classic photos from your from your uh, husband, from B-Boy Records, anything behind the scenes? Do you have any stuff like that? Um, I do. I basically have um, a picture that we took actually when we did the licensing okay. with the lawyers, um, with the lawyers overseas. Yes. Um, we actually did a whole oh, license, license yeah. for the whole catalog, yeah, overseas with Morgan Khan and Westside mm -hmm. Records. Yes. Um, we did that, yeah. It was a Billboard magazine. I had that. And, nice. Um, it's not, yeah, and just pictures of him and the children and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. Here's yeah. a question. Um, where is Where are the masters for Criminal Minded? Oh, that's a good question. Well, after me and, me and, me and Bill left, we were supposed to go back and get them. Unfortunately, somebody had broken the office and they oh. stole the masters. Wow. The funny thing 
about it is, the funny thing about it is, is that um, on Facebook, I see this guy that used to work for, um, where well, we used to do our masters, and he's posting masters, not just for Vivo, but for all these record labels. Mm-hmm. And I asked him where he got them, because I believe that the owner that used to own the master company, I think that he passed away. Okay. So I just think mm. that he just took the masters and just has them, but that's something else too that I'm going to go to court with and talk about, you know. Because yes, yes. People can just take your masters and just do whatever it can, but at the end of the day, like I said, Technically, whoever has them or whatever, they can't do nothing with them. Yeah, because the copyright holder is the masters, and then there's the copyright holder. Right. So whoever has that, because I see names on here. I see Jack Allen, William Kamara, and I see a Ray Wilson. Those are the founder founder names I see on here. Right. They came as friends, and they started the label, but in reality, the one that was running the label was my husband. Jack Allen was the construction. He was... uh, who used to be into the construction, you know, field. Sure. Ray Wilson had a factory where he was manufacturing pillows and things like that. Okay, businessman. Business, but mm-hmm. was also manager to Boogie Down Productions and other acts at B-Boy Records. And he was the tour manager, too, for the B-Boy Act, too. Okay, so, gotcha. So, and then after, after they, after, after Karis won, signed to Jive, they basically had gave Bill full control of the record label because they really, like I said, they didn't mm. know what they weren't in the music industry. They didn't know what they were doing. So oh, right, they, right. Yeah, it's a yeah. specific, and it's they, entertainment. They yeah. Out too. yeah, they bought themselves out too of the money that they had put in when they first all started. Mm-hmm. Everybody got their equal share. So that was yeah. that. Gotcha. Um, another thing that a lot of people don't know is that when um, Scott LaRock, uh, Salarock and um, was actually, you know, shopping, of course, themselves around after the criminal mind they dropped mm-hmm. to go into um, to sign with a major record label because they thought that they were going to have more freedom and more money to do whatever, whatever. No. Well, they ended, <laughs> up, they ended up signing willingly, you know, with Jive, but it was a, yeah. it was a problem because they were, tied into a pro- they were tied into a contract that was for 10 years. Mm. And they were actually an obligation to the label. Ooh, so yeah. The person that was, he he told Jack, "Why are we gonna keep them against their will? Let them let them go ahead and do. We have other acts. We have 110 plus acts signed. We yeah. can do the same thing and you know develop them." So uh, they went. But one thing that a lot of people do not know is that when Chris signed over to Jive, which it, we was Zamba Entertainment slash Jive. Yes. And now they become Sony because Sony bought them out. Mm-hmm. Um, they, 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 he, he relinquished, he relinquished all his rights. Wow. And he according mm. to B-Boy, yes. He don't tell nobody. Technically, he's not even supposed to be performing those acts because they no longer belong to him once he signed to Jive, okay? Wow. And, and I have to bought him, yes, see what I'm saying? And yeah. he always goes back to the criminal mind but Chris never speaks good about B-Boy. And that's where he started his career, and that's who we branded him and we started him. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's interesting. You understand what and um, that's it. I mean, he really wished all his rights for the criminal minded South Bronx digital over to the B-Boy record. Mm. To the point where we have a deal with Jive and Zamba for them to, they asked us that they could release some of the records and they will give us, you know, pay us royalties for that. And we agree. We have a contract with them too. Mm. Because we have the rights. We have sold them legal rights to the whole criminal minded South Bronx that Richard over. But Chris Ooh. doesn't talk about that. He doesn't tell nobody that. You no. Know what I'm saying? No. So, wow. so this is a thing. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that people don't know that happen behind closed doors. Yeah, and things that have happened, and you know, people don't know. Um, I understand that you know he he's the artist and he performed it. Mm-hmm. But once you relinquish your rights to something, you have no longer ownership. Therefore, you should have no right to do anything with that. And every single time that he went on tour and he performed, he, you know, Boogie Down Productions and B-Boy Records and anything that had to do with our label, he was supposed to pay us royalties, and he hasn't, not even a dime. I haven't asked him for a dime. Wow. You would understand? you but, Would you want to work with um, Karis One in some form? Would you want to work with him? I would love to. I mean, I, I yeah. approached him a couple of years ago, okay. uh, maybe seven, eight years ago, Yeah. Uh, that I was going to start the B-Boy Records World Corporation, and I, you know, maybe that we could get together and yeah. we could label together. I even gave him the opportunity to be one of the executives in the label. And yeah. he said, well, uh, I need a million dollars of fun. I said, well, if I had a million dollars, I would give it to you. Ah, uh, Chris. <laughs> yeah, you know? Chris. You know, he... And, uh, oh, go ahead. Continue. Continue. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I was just going to say, he's doing his independent stuff. He just dropped the record just the other day, actually. Um, He's doing the band he camp. Yes, he had a really, really 
Yeah, yeah, very independent. Well, I yeah, them, I wish them the best. I wish them yeah, the best. Yeah, it would be great. Like, like I just like that. My heart would want to come full circle and you know and and do it. That's just me. I'm not you know I'm small guy, but just watching yeah. you know from from like I said, I was ten years old when that Rain Criminal Minded came out. Yeah, a lot of things. A lot of things <laughs> Because even when Scott died, we did a press, press conference at the, at the mm. a Union Square, and we had the press there. You know what my husband had told the press that yeah. we were gonna open up, we were gonna open up a fund account for Scott Levac Jr. See, okay. If if, if 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 um if Jack Allen wouldn't have been in the way of everything, we mm -hmm. would have probably been giving Scott Levac Jr. a check for a couple of million dollars. Wow. You know Okay, so, so he messed that up for everybody, even me, everybody, my children. I mean, we 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 they have regular jobs. We don't have any money because everybody's up there uh, taking our brand, brand with it, and doing bootleg music and doing all this stuff. You yeah, know? And, and now let's see it messed yeah. up. But let's believe that this year, uh, 2021, I already spoke to my son. We're about to take over. To there you go. Really, good for you. you know, good for you. Still. Yep. Good for you. Yes, That's cool. Yes. So you spoke yes. on um, Scott LaRock Jr. Um, have you heard him lately uh, within the, this year or so? I reached out to him. He's very humble. Um, yeah. I spoke to him and told him my position, you know, about the record label and what happened to my knowledge of everything that I knew. You know, I can't really speak about, Sure. you know, what happened that day because I know that I was the first one that made it to the hospital. So wow. Wow. Yeah, and I was in there. You know, I, I was holding Scott's hand and I was crying and I was just praying that he pulled through. Then his mother and everybody came after that, but um, it was very sad. Wow. I actually wanted that for a long time. But, yeah, you know. that's yeah, because he's had like but, recently um, he's had some select words for KRS One. Um, he was on Doggy Diamonds, another YouTuber. He was on his show. You know, just you know, he's not feeling KRS One. He feel like he feel like KRS One owes him something. So he spoke. It's a few yeah, things. Yeah, of, yeah. He, were, he spoke. Were, yeah, because I think that Chris, you know, his ego got big, and once he, the music was playing on the radio, and he was doing tours and things. And um, yeah. Scott, 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 Scott LaRock and my husband were very close, and they were mm. very, they were both visionaries. As a matter of fact, Scott was a Pisces too, and yeah, they worked along very good, and they had a lot of. But you know, you can uh, work with somebody if they are trying to go one direction, and you're trying you're to going go another the other, direction. Right. So, so that was that. Um, like I said, uh, said G, you know, said G was always around the office, hanging around and just trying to sneak <laughs> around and see what was going on and whatever. Yeah. Uh, said G was never, he never had a contract with Evo Records as a producer. He never had a, mm -hmm. any kind of contract as, um, I know my husband was probably contemplating that maybe like signing him or something. I don't know what they were talking so about. So real quick, before we slide into that, I'm going to right there. We're going to bring it up right now. So Ultramagnetic, so Cool Keith was around in said G? Yes. So they were around because they're kind of like boogie down productions, right? So they're kind of all Bronx guys, kind of, sort of. And um, so you said Sed was around and Cool Keith was around, but they were their own thing. They weren't necessarily BDP and they weren't on B Boy Records. No, they okay. weren't part of BDP. The BDP crew was was McBoo, right? D Nice, D Nice, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Lucky One Six Seven, Casper, Bees, Bronx Boys, 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 Bronx and then, oh, okay, and so then said I, and them, they were just ICU, friends. And ICU. And ICU, yes, ICU. Mm -hmm. Anybody else that claimed to be Boogie Down Production, they were not. They're lying. Okay. You know? And that's fact. I mean, that's, that's what it was. You know, ICU was down with them too. So, okay, so, so real quick. Red Alert was down with them too. Yeah, Red Alert. I didn't hear, hey, you know, it was, that's it, you know. So on the I back of. Part of the Boogie Down Production group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <That's the move. laughs> definitely. So, oh, because I have something I'm going to read off the back of the Criminal Minded record. Just a real quick said G thing. But, so you were around, like, remember that the, were they wearing the leathers yet? The BDP leathers? Or was that after? Did they start wearing them doing with you guys? Because they had these leather jackets with BDP on the front, like on the, was that before, after? That may have been after, huh? Because Dapper Dan. Yeah, when they first dropped their first album, they went, yeah, they went to Dapper Dan's and they got their album. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that that, that's so yeah. classic. That is classic. And Dapper yeah. Dan's still around. He was making everybody's stuff. Eric yeah, B. and Rakim. Yeah, he legend. See, for some people, oh, these young these youngsters don't know about Dapper Dan. They don't know about no Dapper Dan. No, they don't know about Dapper Dan, yeah. So, check the, on the back of the credits, it said, well, it just says, all cuts written and produced by Karis One and Scott LaRock. Special thanks to said G. Said G, he, yeah. he talks about that. I like said, I don't, you know, I have. The reason why, the, the reason he, why my husband put that there because he, I think he did have something to do with the PS3. Yeah, he produced so, a little, yeah, he did some, he did a little bit of beats right, or something but, like that. Um, everything was through the direction of my husband and Scott. You know, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. 
goodness. And even uh, even Ivan Doc, which I had to put him in his place too. I mean, I was in the studio with my husband where he was, you know, he was a, you know, engineer, but my husband had to give him directions or, you know, tone this up, put that down, turn yeah. this there, do this, that, you know. So oh, so your husband... I actually take full credit of uh, nobody producing stuff because my husband was the one that was there directing the whole production. Oh, so your husband so, was hands-on. Okay, so he was an engineer yeah. and producer. Okay. Yeah, me, I was there all night with him in the studios. I mean, we were sitting there sleeping. I was crashing in the sofa, you know, all yeah. night. You know, they were mixing and mastering stuff and doing stuff, you know. So I'm not trying to, like, how old, how, about how old were you guys then? About how old were you guys? Well, I was 18. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yes, wow, yeah, that's young. dope. I'm, I'm, 50, I'm 50, so I'm going to be 53 next month, January. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. That Thank is, you. that's dope. Yes. You, yeah, um, this is, this is history, it's folks. Been, uh, you know, yeah, it's history. You know, I grew up like uh, Chuck Chillow and Red Alert. Yeah. Me, oh, Red young, Alert. You know, uh, we, we grew up together, like, you know, in this industry. Yes. Uh, there's so many people, you know, um, uh, so many people, you know, Guru, mm -hmm. he's not here. But oh, he's rest in peace. One. Listen, you mentioned Guru, yeah, check this out. I, I just so did, just you just, it's just sad, you know. Listen, I just did, um, I got all the Gangstar records on LP. My wife got them for me. So I just did a video um, showing all the LPs. Yeah, Guru, rest in peace. I love Gangstar. That's my, that's my time period. I was in 40th <laughs> I seen him. He gave me a big hug. He mm. said, we gonna hug up. No know? doubt. And, um, you know, Prodigy, which I love. Yeah, you know, Prodigy. My Deep. Favorite. Rest in peace. Black Cruz is my Deep. My Deep, I love him. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and, um, yeah, Prodigy. You yes. Know, I got a chance to meet him and, Dope. you know, vibe with him. Yeah. Yeah, know? that is, yeah, that's what's up. That's so, the classic and the kind of group, yeah. Absolutely. So you wanted to address um, what said G was saying, because I did a video, just, I wasn't taking his side, I was just saying what he was stating. Nothing, I don't have nothing personally against Word up. I just don't like, Definitely. I don't like people spreading rumors, telling lies, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, and just, you know, about people that are not here, like, he's just trying to make himself relevant for 2021, whatever, he's mm -hmm. going to drop his album, whatever. Okay. You know, just keep it official. I know that he hung around Chris and Scott and stuff, but he was not part of Boogie Down Productions, you know. And right. Tyler Rock did not stick his business with nobody unless it was the Boogie Down Production crew. And okay. And he wasn't, Tyler Rock really talk to him about anything that was not relevant to him being in it. So, yeah. I don't know what he gets off saying that Scott told him and all this. That's not true. That's yeah, not okay. Okay, cool. That's what I wanted you to just just clear that, you know, and just give you a chance to speak on the history of um I mean, I have I have I'm a I'm a vinyl digger and okay. I have a lot of vinyl. mostly all classic eighties and I collect yeah. a little bit of everything. That yeah. stuff. I you know, I have a whole room that I just do for my vinyl, but um uh, Okay, dope. Of, they're a great group. I mean, I grew up listening to them too, you know, but yeah. And I don't have any no problems with cookies, nobody else, it's just him. Mm -hmm. Making those statements. Yeah, I feel you. People that are not even here to defend themselves. My husband said, Scott said, you know, um, the only one that can really, I mean, can talk about what happened that day, which I know he never really wants to talk about it because it's a painful experience. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's... It's, that's... It's, it's, it's be nice, and be nice was the only one that was in the car. Mm. You know, that whole situation wow. was because he had some kind of beef with a girl, and Scott went over there as a friend, mm -hmm. watched the whole thing, and... Yeah. Lord and behold, you know, um, it got ugly, you know. It yeah, got yeah. The roof that he got shot. And people and records have nothing to do with that stuff. There you go. You know, as a matter of fact, my husband, too, was very saddened by it. And he, Absolutely. You know, even fired. Scott was his friend, you know. Absolutely, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and we're all hurt. I mean, sometimes I get teary eyes just thinking about it. You know? Yeah, but, yeah, sorry about that. You we can have, definitely. We had nothing to do with that. And that was mm -hmm. very, it was tragic. It was very tragic. You know? Yeah. Yeah, the story has spread. Everybody I was like, got, everybody got affected by it, you know. Mm -hmm. I think about how why would it have been if you know, even if maybe Chris had signed to Jive and Scott would have stayed with us mm. and done some other wonderful things, you know, with yeah. the people and with him. Yeah, so, Sed did say that he was he, he was a good businessman. He had a good head on his shoulders. So you could probably speak to how smart Scott was, you know. So that was just um one of the things that he did say. See, like Scott was the yeah. business was the business brain behind it a little bit behind BDP anyway. The only the only in house producer that we had was our street rap and, and keep our money Mike. Okay. And actually, a lot of people don't know this, but I was also an artist. My husband was always pushing me to put me out there in the limelight and all you know, this all like Mattel's very kind of shy, you know, camera shy. Oh so uh, yeah, yeah. He wanted me to sing back then and all this stuff, and I wouldn't do it. We actually did a show for rappers around the world. 
Mm. And, uh, and, and, and Red Alert was the host with the burning turquoise. My husband wanted me to be the host with Red, but I didn't want to. So anyway, mm. we ended up interviewing like groups like Public Enemy and Paradise and just a whole bunch, you know, yeah. Gloria too. It uh-huh. was a nice group. And then actually, uh, MTV, yo, MTV Rap took our idea and ran with it. But, you know, that was the concept of the whole thing. You know? Yeah, we had, oh, like, wow. Dances, the raw dances. Yeah, it was nice. It was a nice little you know, yeah. you know, show that we had. We started it, but... um. Yeah, that is cool. Back in the, you know, so it was just a lot of things that we were trying to do, and it was just like um, only like I said, two people plus we had some office support, you know, to do what we had to do. It was just a lot to do, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. That is what's up. Um, One little well, we piece. Got it done, though. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> what you say? I said, but we got the work done. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. One thing I'm looking at here, and something I've known for a long time, being an artist, because I paint, you know, graffiti and all that stuff, is um. The B-Boy Records, the logo, the guy holding the boombox, KRS One, right? Yes. Yeah, KRS One drew that. Yeah, that's something I've known. Just yeah, being hip hop, yeah. yeah, just a little little trivia when I when I'm with my hip with my hip hop friends and we doing trivia. That's one of them <laughs> for the ones. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So do you have um? So yeah. Anything else you want to share before we go? I'm gonna let you say your social medias. If you got anything that's coming, any website, anything you want to promote or push, I'll put it in my well, links. Basically, um, like I said, for the 221, you know, I'm looking to maybe um, like I said, have a platform where for digital distribution. Mm-hmm. So any artist, um, like I said, for different genres, not just hip hop. Um, mm-hmm. if anybody wants to submit anything, um, they can. Um, I'm on actually on Instagram, uh, Linda Lopez. Okay. And uh, also on Facebook, I'm on Facebook too. I usually okay. have the logo, uh, Bebo Records World. Yes. Uh, yeah. So y'all won't come to to submit anything. All right. Now we'll drop those links on this video so y'all can go subscribe to Linda Lopez. And um, that's that's how we do it. B Boy Records history. She's the one yeah. right here, y'all. Um, um, KRS One, if you know KRS One's career, here's the beginnings right here. She was yeah, 18. I, I, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I always, I'm so overwhelmed with so many, so much uh, love that I, we get worldwide. Yeah, that's cool. Shout out to all the Zulu Nation. You know, um, mm-hmm. Africa Mabada is not Zulu Nation. You know, we, we, we've done a lot of great things. Uh, so people usually always want to focus on the bad and the negative things that people yeah. do. Um, no, we, we, we have chapters all around the world. Mm-hmm. We're... We have a lot of unity, love, and uh, among ourselves, and we've done a lot of great things for the community. They've done clothes drives, food drives. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. Educated. They, a lot of the students go out to these schools to educate the new youth about the hip hop culture. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of great things. You know, um, I don't judge them. You know, I love them, but um, that's something he has to take on with God, whatever he done or didn't do. I wasn't there to come yes. to defender. I'm not nobody's judge. So sure. Keep that in mind, people. Yep. You know, we'll the Zulu Nation. We say mighty Zulu Nation. You know, mm-hmm. and, and the essence of hip hop. You know, and we actually are the founders, and we are the first family of hip hop. Yeah. And, uh, for the new generation, y'all gotta you know pay homage and uh, that's right. Give us respect because we're the way for you guys. And uh, I love, I love Lucy Bird. I love a lot of the little, uh, all the artists and new artists that are there. Mm-hmm. Um, that 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 are making music. Because rap is a form of expression, you mm-hmm. know, um, and I and I welcome that. I respect that the new generation because they they're talking about their experience or whatever they're going or doing or whatever. Yeah. So I don't, you know, it's not just about the old school, but you know, everything is is evolving. Uh, you know, the new yes. generation they also make part of the history of hip hop too as well. Yeah. But yeah. I welcome all of that. You know, I I reinvent myself and I just um I have I have young boys, you know, that are in the 20s, you know, and they listen to the young rap, you know, they listen to mm-hmm. the old school rap. So yep. I, I welcome all of that. So if any artists, you know, that want to uh, uh, have digital distribution with the Wee Boy, I welcome all of you. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Y'all heard it right here. Miss Linda Thank Lopez. You so the Thank you so much. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you. I hope you guys have a, a nice holidays and uh, be safe. Wear your mask. Yep, don't, don't, you don't. too. <laughs> this, is not, this is not the game with COVID. You know, there's a lot of people just dying right now. So yeah. be safe and protect yourself and protect your families too. Yep, you too. All right, okay. Linda, I'm going to let you go. Um, thank you for coming on. And we'll catch up again. We'll do another one. We will. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, yeah. Peace.